Hey, I'm Shane. Quick question for you. When was the last time that you made a new friend? Just think about that for a second. You got it? Okay, maybe it was when you started school this year or became a part of a new team or you joined your small group here at church. Maybe it was even this week. Well, I don't know about you, but I get super excited when I make a new friend. Meeting that new person, it usually means a lot of other new things are coming my way too. Like new interests that they can share with me, new inside jokes that just us can laugh about, new music that we can discover together. New friends have a way of influencing a lot of things about our lives. I mean, I know that's been true for me. I've got a friend named Kyle, and I'll never forget when we first met. I had no idea the kind of impact that he would have on my life. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. I mean, isn't it true that people just have a way of influencing us more than we even realize? People can actually play a really important role in growing our faith. Think about it. Whenever we hear about someone's journey toward growing their faith, we usually hear them talk about a relationship. And I don't just mean their relationship with God, I mean their relationship with other people. Maybe that's been true for you too. If you consider yourself a follower of Jesus, maybe you'd say it was a parent or a grandparent or a sibling or a teacher who told you about Jesus for the very first time. I mean, maybe you had a friend who invited you to church. Maybe you have a small group leader who's helped you figure out what you believe. Or maybe someone you don't even really know that well has influenced your faith in really big ways. Maybe it was someone on Instagram, or a celebrity you love, or an athlete that you follow, or a person that you discovered on TikTok. Maybe their story helped you connect some dots in your own faith. And even if you're not sure what you believe yet, I bet you can name one person in your life who seems to care a lot about their own faith. Maybe there's something about the way that they treat other people or the way that they act or the things that they say that just seem different to you. There's something about the way they live that makes you wonder why they are the way that they are. Or even if you could be a little bit more like them too. Have you ever thought about that? Well, no matter what this looks like for you, the chances are good that you're sitting here right now because of at least one other person in your life. Someone who invited you or included you or inspired you. Someone who has encouraged you or made a difference in your life. If that's true for you, here's what I want you to know about that. It's how God planned it. Isn't that awesome? God designed human beings to be in relationship with other people, in families, in friendships, on teams, in small groups. God made us to live, grow, and develop our faith alongside each other, to influence each other's lives and faiths in a positive way. Some of you may look around at the people in your life and think, I don't know anyone who's growing in their faith. How am I supposed to find someone to help me do that? Or maybe you think, I'm only in middle school. I'm still figuring out what I believe. Am I supposed to be helping someone else do that right now too? Either way, this doesn't sound easy. Don't worry, friends. It's okay to feel that way too. If God wants our faith to grow and other people are supposed to play a part in that, how do we connect the dots between the two? Do we sit around and wait for someone who loves Jesus to come into our lives? Do we have to go out there and find somebody else's faith to influence? Are we just supposed to hope and pray that we make the right friends or meet the right group of people? Do we just hope to find a group leader who wants to help us? Or is there something more that we can do to connect the dots? This is actually a really great thing to stop and think about. Because whether you realize it or not, you have a choice about who you let influence your life. And just like the right people can move your faith in a positive direction, the wrong people can move your faith in a negative direction. In other words, the relationships in your life are powerful. And if God made relationships as something that can grow our faith, we wanna be careful about the ones that are influencing what we believe. Today, we're gonna look at some wisdom from a man named Solomon. Why do we care what he said about all this? Well, for a couple of reasons. First, Solomon was a king, which is pretty cool if you ask me. And second, he was known to be the wisest man who lived at the time. Thousands of years ago, when he lived and ruled, Solomon was known for giving really good, wise, and solid advice. A lot of it is recorded in the Bible. And that's actually where we're gonna find some of his advice on relationships today. So let's take a look. Solomon wrote this, walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. It's pretty simple, right? Solomon basically said that we all have a choice. We can be the kind of person who hangs with the wise, or we can be the kind of person who spends time with the fools. Now, these words 
are really important here. A wise person isn't someone who is super smart or knows all these random facts. I mean, that's cool, but that's not what he's talking about. A wise person is someone who makes really good, healthy decisions. And a fool is just the opposite. There's someone who doesn't always use good judgment and makes decisions that aren't so great. We get to choose which one we wanna spend our time with and which one we wanna be. Honestly, I wanna be wise. And I think most of you probably do too. So what do we do to become wise? Well, as Solomon put it, we have to walk with the wise. We have to spend time with the people who are making good, healthy choices. We have to spend time with the kind of people who will help make us better. Because if we don't, well, then we risk letting our lives be influenced by fools. This whole thing meant so much to Solomon that he actually put it another way later on in Proverbs. He says, as iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. Solomon was painting a picture that back then would have made a lot of sense. There were people in his culture who spent a lot of time working with metals like iron, and often they'd use iron against iron to sharpen it, to form it into what they were making it to be. Let me show you what I mean. I love to cook. Okay, who am I kidding? I really love to eat. And one of the most important tools in a cook's kitchen is a good sharp knife. And the best way to sharpen a metal blade is actually against something else that's metal. And don't try this at home, it's dangerous. In fact, I'm not even sure I should be doing it. This is a little scary, so I'm just gonna set it here. But here's the deal. The reason this works, well, like Solomon told us, metal sharpens metal or iron sharpens iron. And the same is true with relationships. In the same way, a wise person in your life can help you grow into the person that you were made to be. The right person can encourage you, influence you, support you, and challenge you as you grow in your faith. See, if we wanna connect the dots to help grow our relationship with God, then we need the help of people around us to do it. People can grow your faith. God created us to be in relationship with other people, to have family members and friends and teammates and coaches and small group leaders to help us grow in our faith and develop a deeper relationship with God, to influence us to keep learning, keep growing, and keep connecting the dots in a way that will lead to a stronger faith. Remember I told you about Kyle a little bit earlier? Well, he was that person for me. And you know how he did it? In the most important times in my life, he showed up. He walked through life with me. He was just there to be a great friend and to remind me that God was with me too. And that, that changed everything for me. When I look back, I see how God used Kyle in my life to grow my faith because people can grow your faith. That has certainly been the case in my life and I think it can be in yours too. So. Because God uses people to help grow our faith, who we spend our time with matters so much. Our goal should be to surround ourselves with wise people, the kind of people who will sharpen us just the way Solomon said. Now, you may be thinking, okay, I get that, but what do I do here? How can I make sure that the right people are actually influencing my life in the right way? Well, I think you can start by doing these three things. First, Identify the people that you're already spending time with. Who are the friends that you hang out with the most? Who are the people that you listen to? Who are you going to for advice? Who are the people that you know who are influencing your life in a positive way or maybe even a negative way? You got someone in mind? Think about if those people are encouraging you to be wise or if they're influencing you to be foolish. Second, identify the people who you know will help you grow. Think about the people you know who are wise. Think about the people you know at school, at home, on your team, at church, in your group, or in your community who live their lives in a way that you wanna live your life. Got that person in mind? Even if it's only one person, identify someone you know who might be able to help you connect some of the dots as you grow in your faith. And by the way, your group leader is a great one. Okay, now third, try to get to know that person more. Whoever it is in your life, this week take one step toward building a closer relationship with them. If it's someone at school, Maybe sit with them at lunch or invite them over to hang out at your house. If it's an adult in your life, maybe text them and ask them to talk sometime. And I know, I know that feels scary, but I promise they'll say yes. Why? Because chances are someone in their life once said yes to them. They know how important it is to walk with the wise and they wanna help you do the same in your own life. Now, maybe you're wondering if this means that you can't be friends with someone if they get into trouble a lot or believe different things than you do. Well, let me just be clear. That's not what it means. Of course you can be friends with people who don't think or act or believe the same way that you do. You should be, actually. Maybe they need a friend like you in their life who can help them grow. Or maybe there are great things about who they are that can positively influence your life in other ways. Having friends and people in your life who are different from you can be a really, really great thing. But we need to remember to have strong relationships with people who are wise, who can help us grow in our faith too. God wants your faith to grow. So don't forget to have people in your life 
who want your faith to grow as well. Remember, people can grow your faith because we all need a little encouragement to connect the dots and grow deeper in our relationship with God. Whether it's a big decision or a painful mess, you wanna know that there are people you can send a text message or a DM to, and they're there for you. The good news is, you have a group here at church who can be those people for you. And of course, your group leader is there to be a wise person that you might need in your corner as you explore this whole faith thing together. They care about you so much. So, I hope you'll start sharing with them this week.